APIs and microservices, what's the difference? That is a question you may have asked yourself and today we'll discuss the difference between those two things, how they relate. We also will discuss a concrete example to show you how these things play together and you'll walk away with a better understanding of what these two things are and how they relate. We do all of this as part of our Getting APIs to Work channel where we look at everything and anything having to do with APIs. Let's jump right in. What is an API? An API is an application programming interface and that already tells you quite a bit. It's an interface that allows you to program applications using that interface. Right? And the programmable access to something is really what makes APIs so useful and I mostly say that this access is to digital building blocks, meaning that using an API you can get access to a facility that you don't have to manage, you don't have to care about how it's done, but you can use the API to, for example, access some kind of data or service. Microservices are quite different. Microservices are an implementation pattern. What's important about microservices is that if you do microservices, the main thing is that any functionality that you implement, you implement in a self-contained fashion, meaning that it's its own little standalone program, so to speak, that you can, for example, update and deploy independent of others, which, and that's the main point of microservices, then allows you to evolve your ecosystem of APIs and applications faster. When we look at those two, those two definitions, what we realize is that we actually are comparing apples and oranges when we are talking about APIs and microservices. Because again, APIs are the interface, meaning they hide an implementation detail and that's their job. As a user of an API, I don't have to care how it's being implemented. Actually, I don't know. And that's good. It's one of the big advantages of APIs that I don't have to know how something is implemented. Microservices, on the other hand, are an implementation pattern. They are used by teams who have to implement certain things and teams may choose this pattern so that they can implement and deliver the capabilities faster than they otherwise could. Let's look at an example to better highlight how these things relate and what happens in real life. Now let's assume you have an application somewhere. Let's say you're a bank and this application has access to a number of facilities which are, let's say, provided through APIs. These facilities can be things such as customer data, account data, historical data about, let's say, stocks. So it's all kind, the, the kind of data that you need to run this application. Traditionally, many banks have what is called a monolith, meaning that all of this is implemented in one big program with a lot of internal in, um, interdependencies and that means that even though you have different APIs in the end it all is one big code base that provides this functionality and this is sitting uh, on a whole bunch of databases that store the individual data. This is all fine and it works and it has been working for decades but now something else enters the picture. Let's say somebody wants to develop a cool new mobile phone app. And this mobile phone app also needs access to some data, let's say customer data, but it also needs something new. Like some new user experience that should give users an, an interesting new way to interact with the bank. So you need an API that provides this functionality so that the mobile app can use that but how do you implement it? And this is sometimes where often microservices come into play because now instead of having to coordinate and align with the relatively big team and IT infrastructure that is this whole monolithic thing, we can now go and say, let's just create an implementation that is self-contained, that has its own little database somewhere, and we can just do that, meaning that we can deliver the API faster, meaning that we can deliver the app faster. And we can more easily experiment with things because we can change them quicker and all these kind of things. And this is where microservices really originate. The ability to be faster when it comes to working in environments where traditionally there is not the strict separation of different functionalities. 
it's actually so useful that a lot of organizations now are considering and trying to move their monolith to microservices. I have a whole video on that, how you can do that in the most easy way. It's called the Strangler pattern, but that's not something we'll discuss today. But what's important here is to really understand that what we see here is the structure of the microservices being the implementation and the API just being the way how you access the capabilities provided by the implementation. To wrap it up, if you look at APIs, APIs may or may not be implemented by microservices. As the user of an API, you don't know, and that's good. Microservices are accessible through APIs. They are an implementation of functionality. As somebody who has to implement an API, to implement the functionality underneath an API, maybe choosing microservices is a good idea because you can do so faster, because you have a more self-contained way how you can do it, meaning you can iterate faster, you can innovate faster, all the nice things that organizations are looking for. But the important takeaway here really is to understand that APIs and microservices are not alternatives and they're not really the same thing. They are complementary. Every microservice will have an API and some APIs may be implemented by microservices. That was it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked what you saw. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and I hope to see you back on this channel where we talk about API things all the time. Until then, all the best. See you soon. Bye.